Hi there, thank you for watching. This is the third video in a series of tutorials for the basics of learning Ritual. In this third video, we're going to go through tables, expandable rows, and a brief introduction to list views. Let's dive in. All right, so this morning I went into the Sports Monkey. As a reminder, all of this is being done through a 14 day free trial of Sport Monk's API. So, this is kind of a challenge. Let's see how much I'm able to do. So, I went and see well, what information I can add by each player. Right now, we have the leagues. So, as we change the league, the teams will update. And as the teams update, the squad will update. What other information I can add? So, I went there and find the player statistics. Now, if we take a look at it, we will see by each player, data, zero, there's nested, nested, nested values. And then there's a series of statistics that for each player is being added. There's not much information about what is it. So I then I had to go and search the statistics, the actual names of it. So I just went there and copy them. And you can see that is corners, captain, shots, and so on. So I found the most common ones. and because I wanted it to look nice and you will see it. And I added a URL. You can see offspring. This is the retool storage. So I just went there and uploaded some files to retool storage and copied the link and added them there. So these are the two data sources that we will be using the two statistics to individuals. All right, let's do it. So expandable rows will need additional information. So we will find it in, within table advanced settings, ex enable expandable rows. So you can now start adding components. So I will add a container, put it right over here. And then within my container, a list view. I uh, will select the container. I want expand content to fit. And then the, contain the list view, I will remove this container. The data source for my list view will be the player statistics. And there's some nesting to be found. So these are the instances that I want. So what I will do is dot, and you will see I have to scroll, I have to go down all the way down here. So data, the data, index zero, details. This is the instances that I want. The primary key, it will be type ID, but item type ID. So that's, so now I can add a text here. So now, and actually, I will do it. I will do the list view to be a grid, and I will also an image for the statistic image. I will put it a circular, maybe an image. Let's just do it here. Let's move the text a little bit over here, and I will expand it, and then the image will go here. Right. So now let's find our image for the given statistics. So we will have to find it in statistics because that's where statistics or image content storage statistics and let's open our just stay so that we can actually see what we're looking for dot value dot find x id bear in mind this is case sensitive so my id here the ip the api is bringing it in caps it's equal to item type id so here i'm searching within my list view data source and then I will just return URL. There you go. So I'll now return the URL and you can see it starts bringing those things up here. And then I will copy this. And then for the text, I will do the same. I will leave bold, but I don't want that. I will bring return, what is it that I'm called code? Right, so goals considered, I will just put it here. But now you can see that it returns it all in, there's no caps, so I can use Lodash for that. Let's see if I remember that. So is, no, it's, no. oh, sorry about that. And then it's capitalized, yay, that's it. And then we will just put all of this between brackets. There you go. So you can see it has capitalized the first letter. So that's really helpful in Lodash there. And then next to that, I will add the actual value. So it's gonna be, Item dot value dot total, if I remember correctly. Yes, there you go. Let's just expand it a little bit more to see if we can make it fit there. Yes. And then I don't like this little space. So if I go to preview, I can see a little space there. 
Um, so what I'll do is, let's just remove this, I did just remove some space. I will remove the margin. I'm going to put it here. And actually, I can see it slow. You know, slower. So maybe we can make it instead of bold, we can make it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that works. All right. Now, my container, I want this to hit that and the height. Uh, let me just remove that. So, height should be auto. And then the list view, I want it auto as well. There you go. And then let's just remove the border. And then let's just put player statistics here. And again, if we go back to here, we can put expand content to fit. There you go. We can maybe expand it a little bit higher. Okay. So now you can see I have the image which I downloaded and then I add it there. Let me see if we can just put it there. So it's centered. Um, and then preview. There you go. During preview, you can see actually the image goes becomes bigger. So what if I remove this? There you go. So I actually want to make it smaller. Maybe here in the tabs, in the setup of my image. Auto fix. There you go. This is how we're going to fix it there. Okay. With cover contain, that's okay. Margin, let's just leave it there. And actually, here's now I can make it fix. And um, now that looks much better. Yeah. Okay. So now, what there's okay now one last thing because the api is bringing one list of one set of statistics at a time i don't want it's a little bit messy if we allow users to have more than one of this open oh and actually i can see this scroll bar okay we can think about that so what i want is that the row collapses as soon as another one expands so what we're going to do we're going to go to event handlers and we're going to add a script that i always use in my apps so we're just going to put the action will be run script but actually it's not on click it's going to be expand row sorry expand oh because i'm on the image that's why so i'm going to go here event handlers and then on expand row i'm going to run a script so what it will do is this one so table two actually and then i actually need to add a variable um, to my how does it call collapse row variable so i will add a variable here which is name collapse row variable with no variable with no initial value so if i go back to table expand row so what it'll do is upon expanding row it will collapse the previous row, which will be stored in this and this value. And then it will, after that, it will set value. Um, so which selected row key. So basically, every time you select a row, it will select that and so that the variable will know which row to collapse. Sorry, I, don't, I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but you will just see it. And then we will just a condition. We will, we will just trigger it only when both uh, do not match between what's selected and what's and what's expanded this is to avoid when when user clicks the same row twice and i will do this both for expand row and for select row okay so now when i expand this if i click on another one that automatically collapsed and the same thing applies when i collapse another one that opens it Im immediately now the good thing about this container here is that I can add a loading loading. So when player statistics is fetching, so when this is happening, there will be a loading sign here. So if I open this, it's really slow. So you can actually can't really see it. But I think that's now working. Okay, so you can see that how it's now working now users can expand different it will collapse the other one and it will give time for the api to actually load yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and i will be uploading one more give me your questions thoughts feedback i've been enjoying this and i hope you are enjoying it as well